Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Josue Rincon. I am the program director of Avanza Latino or formerly known as Ideal City C. Super excited because today we're going to be having a special guest, Tanua from Lisk, Los Angeles, which she is the executive director there. She's going to be talking more about her career, a little bit more about the work that she's doing over there at Lisk. Super exciting to hear more about that. So she's going to give some awesome tips and advice if you're a young person that's watching. Maybe you're in high school, middle school, or college, and you don't really know what you know sector you want to work in, or you've heard about the nonprofit sector, and you don't know too much about it. Today, today's interview is going to be amazing. A lot of information, a lot of information that's going to help you to maybe make a decision. Maybe the nonprofit sector is for me. As myself, I work in the nonprofit sector, and I can say it's a very rewarding uh, field to work in as we make a lot of impact in the communities that we serve. And this interview hopefully maybe inspires you to maybe pursue that career. And we thank you again for watching. Please share this video with your friends and family so they can also be empowered with all the information and the experiences they're going to be talking about today. But without further ado, we're going to go ahead and start our interview with Tanua, who is the executive director at LISC Los Angeles. Well, thanks so much for having me on the show today, Josue. I'm uh, Tanua Thrash Intuk. I'm executive director for LISC Los Angeles. Uh, you know, our work really, you know, we do work in the county of Los Angeles, but we also do work in surrounding counties like the Inland Empire, as well as parts of Ventura and Orange County. Very happy to be here. Super excited that you're here with us. And thank you again for accepting the invitation. And now you guys know a little bit about, you know, her title, where she's at, Los Angeles, and a little bit of where she's working at. So did you ever see yourself working in the nonprofit sector? Were you introduced into this field? Or, you know, tell us more about that. Yeah. You know, Josue, when I was growing up, um, I always thought that I was going to go to law school. Mm. And um, it was something that I saw on TV. And I thought, okay, that's the route that I want to go. And then uh, I was in high school and I, you know, heard about and saw the decision and the verdict that came down from the Rodney King incident. And I was an impressionable high schooler. And I said, you know, the law, the law is important, but what my community needs right now um, are people who can help make sure folks have access to housing, quality housing, affordable housing. Um, that we make sure people are able to get access to jobs and jobs that can help sustain families. And while I knew that that was the kind of work that I wanted to do, I didn't have anybody in my family who had ever gone to college. So I was the first to go to college. And I didn't quite know that there would actually be jobs um, available to really uh, allow me to do that kind of work. Um, so I took a leap of faith and really started my journey in terms of deciding that I wanted to make a difference in my community. And this field became the way that I could make that happen and get that done. I like that you said you're the first go to college, you wanted to give back to your community, you wanted to help and somehow, and now transitioning into that, what is it that List Los Angeles is doing now that, you know, that you're the executive director of this nonprofit? What is the work you guys are doing in the community? I'd like to know more about that. Well, I get really excited when somebody asks me that question. I hope not to go on too long, um, but it's the work that I am doing is the work that I always envisioned that I wanted to have happen in my community. So I grew up in South Central Los Angeles on 98th and Figueroa at a time when unemployment was high, gang violence was rampant, um, and people were really struggling to find ways to sustain themselves in housing. And uh, in the neighborhood, I realized as I drove to other neighborhoods that there were things that my neighborhood didn't have. Um, and I was like, why is it that my neighborhood doesn't have that grocery store that I see in another area that is fully stocked um, with things that are not uh, in my community? And so, you know, for me, uh, the work that I do at LISC right now every day is all about uh, believing in and seeing the potential that is possible in neighborhoods, the potential in the place. So yes, um, that potential in the place is all about how do we make sure that there are small businesses and key businesses there that can help bring uh, the employment and the economic vitality to the street. 
Um, the work that we do at LISC is all about investing in the people, right? The, the people that I saw in the community that I grew up in, uh, those people, you know, they, they need to be able to access affordable housing. Those people need to be able to access uh, quality jobs. And so at LISC, we do just that. As a community development financial institution uh, certified by Treasury under the U.S. government, uh, we provide capital to communities. So we make sure that that capital is used to develop, uh, you know, properties in communities so that we can bring in those small businesses. We make sure that that uh, that money, that capital is invested in those small businesses so that they can grow and hire more people. Uh, we make sure that that capital is provided to developers, um, not just to develop luxury condos. That's not quite what we do. We leave that to someone else. But we want to make sure we develop luxurious, affordable housing um, for our community, that the price point is something that families who are, you know, working families can afford. Um, and so that's what our capital does. And, and I get to think about how do we move the capital in that way. Uh, some people probably also see that we do a lot of capacity building, a lot of trainings and access to information. Um, in addition to being, uh, you know, food deserts and capital deserts, a lot of times our communities uh, that need it are, are information deserts. And so we are providing the information to communities and to community organizations so they can be stronger um, and we can really multiply the efforts that are needed in order to make a difference and uh, really create. I talked about what my community didn't have, um, but what drives me is what I believe that my community deserves and needs. Um, and that's all the opposite of what it doesn't have right now. And that's what I work on every day at LISC LA. That's awesome. And just to summarize, you know, like she does a lot, her team, and they do a lot in the community. They give back so much capacity building. They bring capital to and they invest into the community. And that's awesome to hear. They're doing so much work and it's great to see. And thank you, you know, to Nua for all the work you're doing in the community. I know it's b being a big blessing to a lot of organizations, a lot of people in the community. And now, how did you end up becoming the executive director to a chapter of one of the largest nonprofits in the country, which is LISC itself? I know there's um, a lot of different chapters all over the country and you run the one in Los Angeles. How did you land that? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. So LISC is national in scope. Um, we have right now probably going on 37, 38 uh, offices across the country in urban markets. And we also are located in 44 states um, because of our rural footprint and some of the work that we're doing with community organizations there. And uh, it's exciting, you know, to be able to say that I'm the executive director of the Los Angeles office. It's a big uh, set of, uh, you know, a big office uh, to be leading and very, very proud of that. Um, you ask, you know, how do you get there? Well, um, you know, I think it's some combination of a number of things, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I've talked a bit, and you could probably hear in my voice, in my energy, the passion for this work. Um, so I know that they certainly were looking for someone who was passionate about these topics and um, believing that there are solutions and moving on those solutions and making things happen. You know, I talked about um, having gone to college. Uh, maybe that helps having an undergraduate degree from UC Berkeley and a master's from MIT, um, the, the city planning uh, department. Those things might help, too. Um, I also uh, did this work for for many, many years in community. So like Ideal CDC, I was the executive director of a local community development corporation, the West Angeles Community Development Corporation for a number of years. So I had the experience of being on the front lines in an organization, in community, trying to make things happen and constantly going to LISC and saying, hey, here are the kind of things that we need uh, in the field. Um, so having that knowledge <clears throat> was very, very helpful. Um, you know, in addition to that, it doesn't hurt to know some people and for some people to know you. 
Um, but I'm sure that that's probably what got me the interview, maybe not necessarily just the job, um, but making sure that you're elevating your profile and, and showing and showcasing what you can do um, in terms of being an effective leader. Uh, and so at some point down the line, all of those things uh, came together uh, for me. And I was asked to and very pleased to be offered the opportunity uh, to lead the LISC LA office, which I've been doing now for the past six years. And a little uh, fact is um, I actually interned at LISC LA a couple of years ago and I saw how busy and how much work that Tanua was doing and leading her team. And from when I left, your team has grown. It's doubled, right? Yeah. Like you guys are just- it's definitely you could tell you could see you know it's not just you know from her words but her actions show that her team is growing her impact is growing and uh, i know this you know the next question i would i was going to ask you know what advice would you give a young person you kind of already answered some of that stuff but if someone's like in maybe not there like they're about to work yet they, they haven't graduated college or anything like that maybe they're in high school they're they're in uh, college should they be doing st- certain stuff to add to their resume volunteering stuff or um, internships uh, what would you say would be the best advice for a young person I think you've hit on all of the things that, you know, are critical. So, you know, we were pleased to have you uh, consulting and interning with us. And we hope that uh, some of our strategies and ideas rubbed off on you. Certainly, you made an impression uh, with us and helped us think through some things as well. So I would say to interns out there, yes, This is a learning experience for you, and we would encourage you to get connected uh, with internship opportunities, but you have something to contribute to um, and feel good about what you're contributing as well um, to organizations that you're coming to. Frankly, we've uh, had a number of uh, interns. We always stay in contact with them as much as we can. Where we can, we look for hiring opportunities for them uh, as well. So we've had um, that happen, uh, which has been fantastic. Uh, You know, it's wherever you are and whatever you're over. I love to tell people all the time, yes, show up and show out um, and show no matter what it is. Um, Because if there is a leader who is like me, I just might notice. Um, So when Josue was working with us and helping us really expand our social media uh, presence, uh, I knew and I could see and I would say to him all the time, hey, I see what you're doing. I see how you're making this uh, look really good for us. And I appreciate that. Um, And I think that that in some way, while you like to give me and the team credit, uh, you know, we also want to thank you for what you've contributed along the way uh, to our work. I appreciate those kind of words, you know, and I love the advice you give to the young people watching right now. And I could say, yeah, it definitely helped me not just uh, bring it back to the nonprofit, but before I started the nonprofit working here, I, w- I had another job and the internship at List helped me on top of everything else. Like you said, all the stuff, all the community stuff that I did in the past definitely helps. And it's, it makes an impression on the people that are interviewing you. I'm like, oh, wow, this is the work you did and the people you work with. And- made an impact and it was it was definitely a blessing working with uh with Liska Lay um, as an intern and consulting and helping with you guys on that and now I want to hear what is the most fun thing about <laughs> being the executive director of Lisk Los Angeles <laughs> I know I make it look like a lot of fun right mm-hmm. I'm smiling I have a lot of energy um there's a lot of work that goes into this but I recently had the opportunity uh, to be able to accept the largest financial contribution and grant from uh, an organization to list Los Angeles. A couple of weeks ago, I accepted a $20 million grant uh, from Wells Fargo. Yeah, very big deal. Very, very, very big. Yeah, very <laughs> exciting. And that, so, you know, it's it, th- those are the fun moments, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but those those moments come because of hard years of hard work. Um, and I would say that that was a very fun moment. Not only did I get to uh, be on a first name basis with the CEO of Wells Fargo, he said to Nua, so I said, Charlie, um, <laughs> I was able to um, you know share this uh, stage with my staff and other organizations in the community. Um, and then I, we happened to have a surprise visit by a celebrity. 
um, the actor, the comedian, uh, the uh, infamous uh, Anthony Anderson. Oh. And um, because I'm the executive director of LISC, I got a chance to introduce him. <laughs> um, and so those are some of those fun moments that that day just got more and more fun um, over the course of the day. And again, you know, I don't come to that uh, just out of, oh, that might be nice for Tanua to do. While that might be the case, um, I know that we've been working so hard over the last few years in particular to make sure that our small businesses stay in business and are able to get through this pandemic. So um, those resources will really help us do that. That's so awesome. That's definitely sounds like a lot of fun. And to be able to receive um, that grant, I'm sure was super exciting because, you know, you're going to be doing even more work than ever before, more impact. And that sounds like super exciting. And I saw all of that all on LinkedIn when you posted it and other people tagged you. So get a LinkedIn too. You know, that's a definitely another recommendation. But it was super, super exciting when I saw that. I was like, oh, wow, that's that's a huge, huge, huge thing for you and your team. So congratulations on that. I know you're definitely super proud about that. And, you know, lastly, I want to know, uh, Tanua, who or what is your inspiration to continue doing the work that you're doing? Um, it's not just it's not one person. I mm -hmm. do, you know, get inspired by um, certainly past and present leaders. Um, but my inspiration is really what I'm working families who I believe deserve the kind of leadership that I provide, um, who are counting on organizations and leaders like me and you um, at our respective organizations um, to stand up and make sure that uh, there is uh, equity and opportunity in this country. And that's who inspires me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I mentioned on this call already, but I just did the a homeless count yesterday mm. uh, in the county of Los Angeles. I did two homeless counts in one day, two homeless counts in one day. Mm. I started at 4 a.m. in the city of Long Beach, um, took a little break in the middle of the day, and then I started the homeless count at 8 p.m. in the city of L.A. And, uh, you know, when I being out there, engaging in pe with people, um, understanding their stories, um, is really the kind of inspiration that keeps me going in terms of why it is so important that we keep fighting for affordable, decent housing um, that all of us can have access to. Um, and from there, you know, we can create whole people, whole families and whole communities um, that are thriving. And that is um, what keeps me inspired. That's amazing. I love to hear that. That's a inspirational to me, too. And I can relate on that. You know, the people we serve and the families that we serve definitely is an inspiration to the work that we're doing. And I thank you again to Nua for, I know this time flew by so fast, yeah. <laughs> very fast, but you know, I think those answers that you gave were awesome. Uh, it's a lot of tips that you can give th that the young people that are watching, maybe if their parents are watching, that way they get a better idea. What does it mean to work in the nonprofit sector, specifically at Liska Lay as the executive director? Um, I don't know if you have any final remarks, but I just want to say thank you again for coming on with us. And hopefully we have another talk soon and we can be able to do more work together in the community as we have been. I know you've been in the community for very, very long, not just at Lissac LA, but like you said, at West Angeles CDC. And I know there's, there's so many more years to come of great work that you're doing. This, this is just the beginning. So thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate you having me on. And uh, I'm always up for making sure that the next generation knows that we're waiting on them and we need them to lead. Awesome. We thank you so much. Take care, everybody, and thank you again for watching today.